Can you say Happy Mother's Day? Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Mom, for helping me learn Chinese. Thank you for always taking care of us. And thank you for always buying yummy food for us. We love, love you. you. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Hi. Hi. Happy, Happy Mother's Day. Day. Uh, Mama, thank you for being such a supportive mom. Thank you for taking care of us and providing for us. Mm -hmm. And um, even though we're... We're tough to handle. <laughs> yeah. We're mangulit sometimes. Thank you for um, always being patient with us and reminding us um, what we need to do. Especially during quarantine because we have nothing else to do. <laughs> Thank you for helping us being productive and providing for us with food, water, and everything we need. And sometimes I'm mangulit and always spill stuff. <laughs> Thank you for teaching me to be more responsible. Love you, Mama. We love you, Mama. Happy love Mother's you. Day. Happy Mother's Day. We're happy. We're happy that that you did all of the the good things for us, and thank you for for being my great teacher, and thank you for for all of the dishes that you wash, and thank you for for being for being the best nanny ever, and thank you for washing the dishes, and thank you for the study books you always teach me you're the best best nanny ever in the whole world happy mother's day we love you Hey, good morning church in the book of Isaiah, in chapter 6, the prophet was given a vision of the Lord in his temple. And the angels were calling out to each other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is full of his glory. And for us, it's a privilege that we can do this wherever we are, in spirit and in truth, because of what Jesus has done for us. So let's sing this song together. Amen. Song. Oh, 
In Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 to 16, it says, Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let's sing. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong and perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives in My name is graven on his hands, my name is written on his heart. I know that while in heaven he stands, no tongue can bid me thence depart. No tongue can bid me thence depart. Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within. Upward I look and see him there who made an end of all my sin. Because a sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God the just is satisfied To look on Him and pardon me To look on Him and pardon me Behold Him there Behold Him there, the risen Lamb my perfect spotless righteousness, the great unchangeable I am, the King of glory and of grace. One in himself I cannot die, my soul is purchased by his blood, my life is hid with Christ on high. Christ my Savior and my God, with Christ my Savior and my God. When in Himself I cannot die, my soul is purchased by His blood. My life is hid with Christ on high. Christ my Savior and my God, with Christ my Savior and my God. morning church blessed sunday all to all of us and happy mother's day to all the mothers amongst us let us join our hearts in prayer father in heaven we come before you today with thanksgiving and praise for you are faithful and true you have shown yourself faithful to us individually and as a community in these trying times you have provided protected and comforted us. You have given us a church, our families, and friends to where we can be a part of. You have given us your word to guide us. Father, we pray for our country in this time of pandemic. We ask that you guide our leaders. We ask that you give them wisdom on what to do and how to lead this nation. We pray for the president that he would make the right decisions that he would do what is right and pleasing to you. 
we pray for the Senate and Congress that they would craft laws based on your word. We pray for those who are tasked to execute the law that they would do it right. We pray for justice. We pray for your mercy, O Lord. Father, we pray for all the medical practitioners attending and caring for the sick, that you bless them, that you protect them from being infected of the coronavirus, that you would strengthen them, and that you would comfort them. Father, we pray that you give us a fervent spirit and serve you, O Lord, that we rejoice in hope, be patient in these afflicting times, and that we be faithful in prayer. We ask that you teach us and help us find rest in you, that we learn to lay our burdens down before you. We pray that you continually walk with us as we go through this pandemic, the economic stress, emotional and relational stress of the challenges we are facing. Many of us are fearful and anxious of the unknown before us. May we be comforted by your staff. May we not be fearful, knowing how you have been faithful in the past, that you are good and that you love us. May we learn to find peace in you, in your prayers. Your word, may your word come to life and be seen in our lives. We pray for those who are weak and sick physically. We ask that you touch them with your healing hands. May you restore their health, O Lord. We also pray that you breathe in life into our spirits as we go through this journey. In this pandemic, we ask that we may not lean on ourselves, but learn to lean and trust in you alone. Father, this week we remember the mothers amongst us, how you have blessed us with their lives and their sacrifices. We appreciate them and thank you, O Lord, for you have nurtured us with their lives. We ask that you bless each mom in this church and that you continue to work in their lives. We ask that you keep them strong and healthy. Father, we pray for the leaders of your church, that you bless them, that you give them wisdom in leading this church. We thank you for them and even in this time of uncertainty, you have allowed us to worship in one spirit, though we are apart physically. Father, we ask that you anoint PRV with your spirit as he delivers your message. May you speak through him and that we would listen and obey. Father, we thank you and all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Church. I scripture reading for today is Psalm 23. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me to beside, beside still waters. waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though walk in the valley of shadow and death. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your stuff, they comfort me. You, you prepare, prepare a meal, a meal for, for me, me in front of, of my enemies. enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May God bless the reading of his word. A 
Hello, good morning everyone. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers of GCF Makati. We miss you so much and, and how we long that we could fellowship together and give you a big hug. But uh, we can't do that right now. But uh, I, I hope that you enjoyed our children's uh, simple way of conveying their love to you uh, in the form of scripture reading and some greetings. Happy Mother's Day to everyone and we pray God's blessing upon you all. A thank you to all the kids who have participated in our worship service today. Thank you for all your efforts and thank Thank you for reciting Psalm 23 together and thank you for the sweet messages that you have given your moms. Uh, thank you Brother Pito and Hannah for leading our worship uh, this morning and thank you Clyde uh, even though you are in La Union. Thank you for leading us in prayer this morning. Why don't we join our hearts in prayer before we get into the word. Our Father in heaven we thank you because you are our good shepherd. Thank you Lord because even in trying times you are there with us. Thank you, Lord, because you lead us through difficult times and you never leave us, you never forsake us. Thank you because you are a dependable God and you expel all our fears. You, you turn our sorrows into times of rejoicing and we, we thank you, Lord, for your grace. I pray, Lord, that at this moment, Lord, that you would open our hearts and our minds to take heed of your word. I pray that you would cancel out every destruction uh, that, that, that uh, the enemy could use the, to divert our attention from your word. Holy Spirit, you are our pastor, our leader, and our guide. Would you help us uh, and would you point us to Jesus to understand your word, Lord, and to be changed by it and to, to live in accordance to it. Lord, I submit to you myself uh, at this time, Lord, you know my weakness, but then you say in your word that when we are weak, then you are strong. And so, Lord, we lift you up this morning. We praise you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Last week, we talked about a uh, lot of reasons not to fear. Uh, specifically, Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. What words of comfort spoken to us by the Lord. Indeed, we, we don't have any reason to fear. In fact, though there are things that would cause us to fear if we change our perspective and look at who God is and who is the God that we serve, then those concerns that we might have may fall short and would become smaller in light of His goodness and His grace. Uh, today, I want to consider and for us to focus our attention uh, to who this God is, to who God is. Who is this God who gives us this promise this God who calls us not to fear for because He is with us. Who is this God? Today we turn our attention to a, to a psalm that is very popular. This is a, a widely memorized psalm. This is a highly quoted psalm. This is a psalm that, 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 that is uh, widely advertised. And so if you go to Christian bookstores, you would see this everywhere. It is Psalm 23. It is a psalm that is so simple that even children can understand it and even memorize it. But yet, it is a psalm that is profoundly deep that it could blow the minds of many theologians. Let's consider Psalm 23, the verse, the passage that our children read to us this morning. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What beautiful words. Nathan had memorized this psalm when he was very, very young. So I challenge you, uh, older people, you know, more advanced in years and with more capacities, why don't we take a look at this psalm and why don't we try to memorize it and internalize it in our hearts? You know, this psalm talks about four things about the Lord. It talks about the perfection of God. It talks about the provision of God. 
It talks about the protection of God. And it talks about the presence of God. I believe in this very trying time, we need to be reminded of these four things. That God is absolutely perfect. That God provides for us. That God protects us. And God is so close to us. And the presence of God is with us. So let's consider these four things one at a time. The first one is the perfection of God. Listen to the first line of the psalm. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You know what? This week as I was studying the psalm, I, I must confess it, it was so hard for me to get over this first verse. Because this first verse that David writes is a verse that is so profound. And it's so comforting in its depth. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. This past week, it's, it, uh, it's been an eye-opening, uh, an eye-opener for me to realize that we are a people that are shepherded by many things. We are shepherded by the media. We are shepherded by the government. We are being shepherded by our fears and our anxieties. We are shepherded by our resources. Who is your shepherd? Who is the one leading you to find green pastures? David says that the Lord is my shepherd. Therefore, he has the full confidence to say, I shall not want. Who is this Lord? In another psalm, David says, Psalm 121, verse 1 and 2, he says, I lift up my eyes to the hills from where does my help come. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. This is, this is beautiful when you read it in Tagalog. Uh, in the Magandang uh, Balita Biblia, it says, Doon sa mga burol ako'y napatingin. Sa asaklolo sa akin, saan manggagaling? Ang hangad kong tulong kay Yahweh nagmumula. Sa Diyos na lumikha ng langit at lupa. You stop and meditate on that. Or you stop and just contemplate these words of David. His help comes from the Lord. Who is the Lord? He's the one who made heaven and earth. You know, this reminds me of a of a story in, in the in Moses' life in the book of Exodus at chapter four. And this is the this is the part of his life where God is calling him to go to Egypt and to and to help the people of Israel come up of slavery. And and Moses is being called by the Lord, but but Moses was experiencing a, a profound insecurity in his heart. And so in Exodus chapter four, uh, starting from verse ten, he says, Moses said to the Lord, "O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent either in the past or since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow speech and of tongue." And this is what the Lord said to him. Then the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Who makes him mute or deaf or seeing and blind? Is it not I, the Lord? And sometimes when we, when we look at ourselves, we, we see a lot of limitations. And truly, those are limitations. We are imperfect people. But it is the Lord who calls us. And it is the Lord who leads us. And then, so like Moses, if we say to the Lord, Lord, I am slow of speech. I am not very eloquent. Would you send Aaron instead of me? The Lord says, who made your mouth? Are you saying I, was, I, I got things wrong when I made your mouth? Are you telling me I got things wrong when I made you? No, I made you exactly who you are. I made you exactly who you are to accomplish the purposes that I have for you. This is David's confidence. He says, The Lord is my shepherd, therefore I shall not want. God, the God whom we serve, is the God who made heaven and earth. And this is the God that is so near to him. In Tagalog, David is saying, you know, there, you know, there are a lot of things that, that uh, gets lost in translation when we read the English. But then we, 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 we have to really contemplate what David is saying here in Tagalog. This is how it's rendered. And it's beautiful. Would you read it with me? It says, Si Yahweh ang aking pastol. Hindi ako magkukulang. 
Pag-isipan nyo nga yun. Can, can you stop and think about that? You know, sometimes that gets lost in translation. When you read the English Bible, when you see the capital L-O-R-D, what you get is the transcendence of God. But then, don't you forget that when you see that capital L-O-R-D in the Old Testament, that refers to the personal name of God. And what David is saying is that Yahweh is my shepherd. And because he is his shepherd and he would lack nothing. Si Yahweh ang aking pastol, hindi ako magkukulang. If I were to tra- translate this in Tagalog, I would say, Si Yahweh ang aking pastor. Wala na akong hahanapin pa. The shepherd that is leading us is the God who has created heaven and earth. He knows the ins and outs of our lives. He has mapped up our lives even before we were born. And He is the one, the personal God, the covenant-keeping God that is leading us. He is our shepherd. And because He is our shepherd out of His perfection, we will lack for nothing. Ano pang hahanapin natin? Gawa ng siya, ang ating pastol. Psalm 23 talks about the perfection of God. I hope that you would begin to contemplate who God is in your life. The moment that we forget who God is, it's the moment that we succumb to fear, succumb to temptation, succumb to distress and anxiety. But God is perfect. We might be in an imperfect situation right now, but God is the perfect God who will accomplish His purpose for you and for me. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. The second thing that this psalm uh, shows us is the provision of God. That out of God's perfection, He provides for us in ways that we cannot even imagine. The first thing that the psalmist says is that He makes me lie down in green pastures. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Um, Let me show you a picture of what uh, green pastures look like in the uh, nation of Israel. This is what it looks like. And contrary to what our imagination uh, is of a green pasture, uh, Israel is a desert place. And most of its country is it's really rough terrain. And the green pastures talks about this uh, blobs of of grass that is scattered um, in the land of Israel and the shepherd's task is to is to lead the sheep into places where they could find enough for the day our faithful shepherd brings us out into his pasture he provides what we need and again tomorrow we can be assured that he would lead us into places where we would find nourishment for ourselves Uh, Jesus says in John chapter 10 verse 7 to 9 Jesus says again uh, he said to them truly truly I say to you I am the door of the sheep all who came before me are thieves and robbers but the sheep did not listen to them I am the door if anyone enters by me he will be saved and will go in and out to find pasture the Lord Jesus Christ is the Good Shepherd He is the one leading us to places where we would find nourishment for our souls. The psalmist continues and he says, He leads me beside still waters. If you have an ESV Bible, you would notice that there is a superscript uh, there and it would lead you to a footnote below your Bible and it would say, you know, He leads me beside waters of rest. And so in the same way as, as the shepherd leads his sheep, to green pastures to find nourishment for their souls he also leads them to places of rest where they could be replenished and drink in water uh, that's what jesus says in matthew 11 28 to 30 where he says come to me all who labor and are heavily laden and i will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for i am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light and so think about those first two things that the shepherd does he makes me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside still waters this is something that the shepherd does over and over and over 
again, day in and day out. He finds nourishment for your souls and He provides you rest for your souls. And the psalmist says, He restores my soul. How many of you would say that your souls needs restoring right now? If, if you are a person who is working with a laptop or a computer and, and it's just laden with many malware and viruses at a certain point that in in your computer that you would hit the the button that says restore to original factory settings and what that that button does is it would erase all the data and it would essentially give you a fresh slate a fresh memory and you can start all over again and for us people who are heavily laden people who are weary you know, sometimes we would wish that there is a restore to factory the settings button in our lives. You know what? Our good shepherd, our good shepherd can restore our souls. Our good shepherd can restore our lives to what it is meant to be. No matter how we have destroyed our life, or we have strayed from his path, our good shepherd is perfectly capable of restoring our lives in the manner that it's supposed to be you know isaiah 53 6 says this all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned everyone to his own way and the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all you know in the bible uh sheep is uh is a metaphor to what we are and our relationship to our lord who is our good shepherd now if you think about sheep these are vulnerable animals these are animals who are who are very simple and these are animals that are easily led astray and without a shepherd it's it's going to be difficult for them to survive and like the song says that we are prone to wander and prone to leave the God that we love. That's exactly what Isaiah is saying. Like sheep, we have gone astray. We have turned everyone to their own way. And we are lost sheep. Remember what Jesus says, that He is the good shepherd. The good shepherd leaves the 99 behind to find that one sheep. And you know what? At a certain point in our life, we were that one sheep. And the Lord took the initiative to search us out and to find us. And the Bible says, in order to restore us, the Lord took on Himself the penalty of our sins. The Lord has laid on Him the iniquity of us all. Jesus says in John 10:11 and verse 18. Uh, John 10:11 and verse 18. He says, "I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep." Jesus says, "No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received uh, from my father you know what the essence of being a shepherd a shepherd a good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep and that's exactly what the lord jesus christ had done for us we have gone astray we have turned each to our own way and the lord took upon himself our iniquity he paid the price of our sin so that we might be reconciled to God and we might be restored into his presence he restores my soul Psalm 23 verse 3 again says he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake now that gives us the picture of the intention of the Lord why is he leading us in this way why is He providing for all our needs by leading us in green pastures and giving us rest beside still waters? Why does He restore our soul? Why does He lead us in the way of righteousness? He does that for His name's sake. You know, the Lord so loves us that He has deemed it worthy that we should bear His name. In fact, Paul talks about it, doesn't he? That we are God's ambassadors. That we become children of God. That we bear His name. That He has His stamp of approval in our lives. That's why not only does God restore us, does the, the Lord does not only pardon us and, and absolve us from the penalty of our sins, He also leads us in paths of righteousness. He it makes it uh, he ensures that we would be on the right path 
for His name's sake. He's the one guiding us. He is the one in strengthening us and helping us so that we might live out this life that He had intended for us to live. Oh, how God provides for us. He is a good shepherd. And I pray that you would begin to recount the many provisions of the Lord for you in terms of leading you in green pastures, of giving you rest, uh, of of restoring your soul and being led in righteousness. Oh, these are some things that these are things that we desperately need even at this time. You know, I've noticed in my life, even in my quarantine, in this in this time where we are cooped up at home, you know, time flies so quickly. You know, my level of workload is not different from when I am up and about and able to come in and out of my home. And it, it's so easy to be consumed by the urgent stuff that we have to accomplish and do and lose sight of who God is and how He provides for us. Would you take time uh, this week to contemplate how the Lord has provided for you and how the Lord has seen you through, even through this pandemic and beyond this pandemic? So the Lord our good shepherd is the perfect shepherd he's the one that provides for us and number three is the one who protects us the good shepherd protects us no, notice what uh, david says in psalm 23 verse 4 and 5 he says even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. And notice uh, a transition in language. Now, a while ago, uh, David was uh, telling people about who this good shepherd is. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me uh, lie in green pasture. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And then now, He shifts uh, His perspective. A while ago, He was telling us who He is. Now, He is talking to Him. Notice what He says. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. It is you who anoint my head with oil so that my cup overflows. You notice that transition? In, in talking about who this good shepherd is, David is just so filled with the presence of God and, and who God is that he stops talking about God and he begins talking to God. And notice the things that he says about God. The first thing he says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Well, let's not forget, you know, that it is true that the Lord is the one who leads us to green pastures, and it is He who leads us beside quiet waters, but also the same God who leads us through the valley of the shadow of death. But David has full confidence that he says, you know, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me a uh, david is a person who had his share of trials before he was king he he spent half of his life um in pursuit of the philistines and in pursuit of uh in hiding from Saul. he spent his life in wilderness he was in a constant uh danger from his enemies and from people who would betray him uh, David suffered even in his own family. He he bore the grief of a loss of a child. Even his own son, Absalom, took him out of his throne and he was fleeing again. David knows how it is to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But in his life, he has learned to say, I will fear no evil for you are with me. God is so close to him. 
you know, one of the things I've been doing uh, during this quarantine season is watching Netflix. Every Monday, I watch this program. It's called The Last Dance. Uh, I know many of the men here know what I'm talking about. The Last Dance is a, a documentary recounting the 97, uh, 1997-1998 NBA season where it was the Chicago Bulls' uh, last run. Uh, to be together and to be champions. Uh, in the first episode of The Last Dance, uh, Steve Kerr, uh, the present day coach of the Golden State Warriors who was part of this uh, Bulls team was interviewed and he was asked, uh, what makes the Chicago Bulls so special? And Steve Kerr with a smile on his face says, we got Michael Jordan. We got the best player in the league. You know, I believe that's exactly what David is saying when he says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because I have you with me. I have the creator of heaven and earth with me. It is you who protects me. And David says, Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me so not only is god with him through the valley of the shadow of death god also gives him comfort it's one thing to for us to recount the many times that god was ebenezer to us till now the lord has helped us but it's quite another thing to feel the manifest comfort that comes from the presence of God. What is it that comforts David in his journey through the valley of the shadow of death? He says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. David is familiar about the life of a shepherd. Remember when when Samuel went to Bethlehem uh, in the house of Jesse looking for this new king uh, of whom he will anoint. Uh, David was left by the pastures tending to his sheep. Uh, David knows what it is to be a shepherd. And two of the shepherd's tools whenever they are out in the field are these things, a rod and a staff. What are these things? Well, a rod is a relatively short but heavy club light device. This is uh, um, an instrument used uh, to defend the sheep from predators. And so when, when a wolf or a lion or any kind of predator would come, the shepherd would use the rod to defend the sheep. Also, the, sh the shepherd would have a staff with him. A staff is longer and thinner uh, with a hook or a crook at one end. The staff is used to direct the sheep. And so when a sheep is going astray, the staff would be used. The, the shepherd would, would put down his staff and the crook would go to the neck of the sheep. And so the shepherd would direct the sheep into the path that the sheep would go. And David says, you know what? Your rod, your protection to the valley of the shadow of death and how you direct me through times of crises, these are things that are comforting to me. Friends, in what way have the Lord defended you in this time? In what way has the Lord shown away your enemies at this time? How has the Lord directed you in this time? You know what? If you have only eyes to see what the Lord is doing in your life, you would receive profound comfort from our Good Shepherd. You know, this comfort that comes from the Good Shepherd would allow us to exhibit profound boldness even as we meet various crises in our lives. You know, this reminds me of the story where, where David is getting ready to face Goliath, but then Saul is doubting whether or not he should send David. So 1 Samuel uh, verse 17, 32-36 records the story where David and, and King Saul have a conversation about David, David going out to battle. This is the story. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him, Goliath. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth, and he has been a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear... And took a lamb from the flock. 
I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, for he has defied the armies of the living God. And so notice what David is saying. You know, remember the, the principle of being a good shepherd is you are a person who is willing to lay your life down for a sheep. And so whenever a predator approaches, David says, you know what, I take my rod, I take my slingshot, and I strike down these predators in order to save my sheep and so you would wonder what 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 causes david to have this confidence he was but a boy what would give him the courage to face lions and bears and wolves look at what david says next and david says verse 37 the lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. And so look at the dynamic here. So David, as a good shepherd, lays down his life for his sheep. But what gives him courage to fight these predators? He knows that he is being shepherded by God. So in the same way that he is defending his flock, his sheep, the Lord also is out there defending him. So he says, the Lord, Yahweh, who delivered me. It's not that I killed the lion and the bear. It's not that I prevailed against them. It is the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear. This same God, this same Yahweh will deliver me from the hand of the Philistines. Friends, do you have that same confidence? Do you have the confidence that, that, that brings out in you such, such confidence and courage to say, you know what, I will fight the Lord's battle. I will do whatever the Lord calls me to do, even though there is danger before me, knowing that it is the Lord who will deliver me. This is what Paul is saying in Romans 8, 31, and then again, 37, 39. He says, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And then he says, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know what? Not even political unrest. Not even the closure of ABS-CBN, not even the coronavirus, not all of these things would be able to separate us from the love of God. Friends, it is the rod and the staff of the Lord that comforts us. So stand under His protection and stand and under His guidance. You would never go wrong. It is the Lord who would protect you and out of His protection you would find courage. But David also says in Psalm 23, verse 5, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. It is you who anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. And so you see the dynamic here. It is God who leads him through the valley of the shadow of death, comforting him through his protection and his guidance. But you know what? In the same way that God leads us through times of suffering, times of difficulty through the valley of the shadow of death, it is also God who prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. You stop and think about that. You know what? There is no limitation and no condition where God cannot give you joy. There is nothing that can hamper or stop the Lord from giving you joy. Not even a, a quarantine, not even a virus, not even a political unrest, not, nothing. Even in the presence of our enemies, the Lord is fully capable of, of, of preparing a table before us. You know, that's one of the things I really admire about Jesus. He constantly prepares a table for His disciples. 
first miracle that he did. He brought wine into the tables of this wedding in Cana. Just before he died, Jesus prepared a table for his disciples, even washing their feet in that table. When he resurrected, he was found in a beach with charcoal and and uh, roasting. You know, inihaw, nagiihaw siya ng tilapia. He was preparing fish for his disciples, and and, and you would look at these contexts, and, and you would find the, the situation where Jesus intervenes in the lives of his people are very chaotic situation. A wedding gone awry, suffering that's gonna befall him in the next day, and people having the house. The Lord is willing and very capable of entering any situation and providing for us joy in His table. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies and you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. What is it to be anointed with oil? Now, David would know something about being anointed with oil. At a certain day in his life, he was just tending the sheep. He was called in uh, from the pastures into the house of his father Jesse. And there he met Samuel. And Samuel prayed over him. And Samuel poured the oil of anointing over David's head. And David was anointed king. You know, being anointed means that you are regarded to be special. That you you are regarded to be set apart for a specific purpose in David's case to be a king he, he the the oil of anointing was laid on him you anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows so in one sense when you are anointed by God you are considered special by God that your life has value in the life in the sight of God. You know, sometimes we get very insecure about our life, like Moses, right? In Exodus chapter four, where he says, "You know, I'm I'm slow of speech. You send Aaron instead of me. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. Don't send me. Send Aaron." And God says, "You know what? Who made you? Who made your mouth? Is it not I? I made you special." David says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. The Lord knows the purposes that He has for your life. The Lord has His hand upon you and He has anointed you to be a kingdom of priests to serve the Lord. And so David says, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. But the second way that we could see anointing is, you know, when when. A shepherd anoints his sheep with oil. That is also a form of healing from the sheep. You know, sometimes fleas would 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 just um, pester the sheep, and the shepherd would anoint the sheep with oil to save it uh, from the many fleas and the ticks that would be in his body. You know, whenever there's a, a sick person, you know the 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 pastors in James uh, they're instructed to anoint uh, the sick people with oil anointing with oil has medical benefits and and so together with with David feeling as if he is very special in the hands of God he is also saying the Lord is my healer friends the Lord is perfectly capable of healing us and even at this time you know, the Lord says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, then I shall hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their lands. Friends, you should come to the Lord in prayer. Ask Him for His healing. And David says, you anoint my head with oil, therefore my cup overflows. And so these are the three things we talked about. The Lord's shepherd, uh, the Lord as our shepherd shows us the perfection of God. It shows us the provision of God and the protection of God. And fourth and finally, it, it shows us the presence of God. Um, notice what David says next in closing. He says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of of the Lord forever. Notice this what he says. Surely goodness and mercy. You know, literally it could say, Only goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Paul says, For those who love the Lord, all things work together for their good. Only goodness and mercy shall follow me. 
you know it, it 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 gives you the picture of goodness and the lord's mercy pursuing you all the days of your life it's not as if we are the ones pursuing the goodness of god if we strive in a certain way then god would be good to us if we perform perform certain tasks then then god would be merciful to us no david says because the lord is his shepherd it is goodness and mercy that is following him these are undeserved graces from the lord goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life you know what lamentations 3 22 and 23 says this the steadfast love of the lord never ceases his mercies never come to an end they are new every morning great is your faithfulness you know whenever things uh, go bad and things are looks uncertain in my my eyes and i am just overwhelmed with anxiety and concern you know i look to the clock whenever the clock strikes midnight friends remember the lord's mercy is new the lord's mercy is new every morning and because of his steadfast love another way of saying steadfast love is stubborn love because his love is the one pursuing us we never find ourselves at a loss because the steadfast love of the lord never ceases and his mercies never come to an end because of his great love we are not consumed because his compassions they never fail they are new every morning great is his faithfulness towards us david says surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i shall dwell in the house of the lord forever you know what that's david's ultimate desire for his life Psalm 27 verse 4 says, David says, One thing I have asked of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. Friends, that is a profound comfort for your life and my life. That at the end of the day, if the Lord is our shepherd, goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life and at the end we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever psalm 23 is a very familiar psalm to us it is widely recited it is widely quoted but psalm 23 gives us a picture of a god who is perfect a god who provides a god who protects and a God whose presence is ever so close to us. Friends, in this time of great crises, when things are going awry, friends, may we stop and contemplate who is really shepherding us? What is shepherding us? You know, there are many options. There are many shepherds that can present themselves the media, government officials, the coronavirus, our work, our resources. And these shepherds, you know what, at a certain point you would find, if you follow these shepherds, that you would find you would lack and you will want for many things. When you go through the valley of the shadow of death, you would quickly realize that these shepherds would forsake you. But you know what? If the Lord is your shepherd, you would lack for nothing. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil because He is with you. And He would comfort you with His direction and His protection. He will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies and anoint you with oil, making you special in His sight and healing you and promising you that goodness and mercy would follow you all the days of your life. Who is your shepherd? Is the Lord your shepherd? How is your walk with the Lord? This is a good time to really think about it. And it is a good time to really stay close with our shepherd. The Lord is our pastor. And because He is our pastor, we have nothing else to look for. Friends, don't you ever forget that. Jesus 
is our pastor. Jesus is our shepherd. We can fully rely on Him. He will lead us into the path we should go. We can put our full trust and confidence in Him because He cares for us. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers here in GCF Makati. You know what? Your mothering to your children is a reflection of God's shepherding to His people. It is a noble calling to be a mother and a godly mother. And I know that the Lord is proud of the efforts you put in raising up your children in the fear and knowledge of the Lord. Friends, I miss you all and I pray that, that the Lord would protect you and keep you till we meet again. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you because you are our good shepherd. Thank you, Lord, because of you that we would want for nothing. It is you who leads us through pastures and still waters. It is you who restores our souls and leads us into paths of righteousness for your name's sake. So we have full confidence that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we should fear no evil because you are with us. Thank you for the, for the comfort of your rod and your staff. Thank you for your protection and your guidance. Thank you, Lord, because you prepare a table before us even in the presence of our enemies. You're the one who heals us and sets us apart by anointing our heads with oil, making our cup overflow. And thank you, Lord, for that promise that surely goodness and mercy would follow us all the days of our life as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We thank you, Lord, for this time. And now, Lord, may you, the Good Shepherd, the chief shepherd of sheep, receive all the glory and honor in our lives as we follow you all the days of our lives. All these we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all.